Hey guys, what's up? Toba Loco here. Welcome to another reserve run, but this time on the 2014 FIFA World Cup game. Can Germany's reserves win the World Cup? So in this series, or this little mini series that we're doing, is we're trying to find out if reserve players from every World Cup winning squad could win the World Cup. And we'll do a few others as well, maybe like a few finalists or whatever. So maybe on this game, we'll go back with Argentina and see if we can go that far. This is It's a strange situation for Germany in a, in a lot of ways because reserve runs I've done in the past, such as Spain and um, Italy in 2006 as well, you know, they've had really good players and stuff like that. But Germany are slightly different. I'm not saying they don't have good players. What I'm trying to get at is that they subbed on Mario Goetze in the World Cup final and Mario Goetze won it. So technically a substitute did win it for Germany. So we keep the groups and we keep the teams exactly the same. All we need to do is make sure that Germany have no starting players in their team. So this is the starting 11 for Germany. Obviously you've got Neuer, Lahm, Mertesacker, Boateng, Schmelzer, uh, Schweinsteiger, Kroos, Muller, Royce, Ozil and Closer. Very, very good players that I could use in this run. Here are the substitutes just below them. So we've got Adler, Hummels, Howardes, Gundogan, Bender, Goetze, Gomez, Bender, again, Podolski, Scherler, Janssen, Zila, and then some reserves here. Draxler to Stegen, Kroos, Sam, Bad Stuber, Herman, Vesterman, Kadira, Ayogo, uh, Muller, but the other Muller, uh, Hunt, Aaron Hunt, okay, I've never heard of him. And we're getting down to like basically um, the players I've never really heard of apart from Weinfeller, I've heard of him. So what we need to do is change this squad so that I can use their reserve players. So although some of these players, like such as Kadira, are good players, they're still technically a reserve player because they are in Germany's reserve. It doesn't matter if Germany used those players in 2014, even for like a game or two, we're still using those players. We're not allowed to use any of the starting 11. All right, guys, so that is my Germany team. This is who I have picked for this reserve run with Germany in 2014. We've got Adler in goal. We've got Howardes at centre-back. We've got Hummels also at centre-back. Mertesacker at centre-back as well. So we've got three centre-backs. We've got uh, Marcel Janssen and left-back. Kadira at CDM. Goetze at centre-attacking midfield. We've got Sidney Sam out on the right. We've got Andre Scherler out on the left. Podolski um, sort of like in the... Another left midfielder, but we'll probably put him somewhere else. And we got Mario Gomez up top. So Germany's group, of course, in 2014 was Portugal, Ghana and the United States. I'm fairly sure Germany in real life, they pretty much battered Portugal, didn't they? Won it like a 3 or 4-0 or something like that or 4-1. I can't remember uh, straight off the top of my head. I ain't got the stats in front of me, but it's going to be a lot harder now. So our first match for this World Cup, this reserve World Cup for Germany, is against Portugal. It's on world class because I don't really play legendary on 2014 because I'm not good at 2014. It is my weakest World Cup game. If you want my honest opinion about this Germany squad, this reserve one, it's good. I reckon that in real life it would get out of a group stage. They've got the talent to get out of a group stage like this. I think they would have found it a bit of a struggle against Portugal, but in the other rounds it would have been hard work for them, especially against Brazil. It definitely wouldn't have been a 7-1 like it was in real life. Scherler. Now, I understand that a few of you might say, like, oh, some of these players are actually fairly decent anyway, especially with, like, the likes of Scherler and players like that were actually pretty de decent at club level. I'm fairly sure Scherler played for Chelsea at this point in time. Into the middle, Andre Scherler. Go for the strike. Oh, just wide from Scherler. I love how everybody just kept bumping into each other then. That's what I love to see on the 2014 World Cup game with some of the, well, not the worst physics in the world, but definitely not the best either to Janssen. Out on the wing here. Can he get the cross off? No, it's blocked and then blocked again. That's the problem. It's a block party. And you just got to make sure that you don't sort of run into most of these defenders. But most of the time you will because the computer is so good at defending on this game, especially when it's going through like this. It's trying to make a point here. Howardes, get rid of it. Thank you. A little bit of a wide run, but it's fine. We'll cross that in and it gets blocked again. It always does. So just got to be patient and hope that we get the right chance. It, we are against Portugal. It is tougher because we haven't got our first team players. 
Good ball movement from Germany. Trying to lose my man here. Go for the strike. And we scored. Nice one. That's Mario Gomez with the first goal for Germany. And it is 1-0. I told you. Be patient and the goal will come. Not bad from Germany's reserves. We hold off Portugal pretty well, to be honest. Like, even though we haven't got our main defenders, we're still defending very well. It's a good through ball. Here comes Sydney Sam. The pace. The pace. But the shot wasn't there. Oh, punched away by the goalkeeper. We go for the strike. It's blocked by the defender. Portugal looking to press. Danny gets cut out there. Very well done by Germany. Oh, well, I was about to say that, but they're about to score. No. We keep getting tackled now. And here come Portugal. And they put it wide. Their first real chance of the game. And it goes wide. Gomez battling. There's only one minute left and that is it. We just beat in Portugal 1-0 with our reserves. So Germany's reserves are good enough to beat Portugal. Only slightly. In real life it was a bigger result. But I'll take that for three points. Now we just got to beat USA and Ghana. Second match, Germany versus Ghana. We should have enough to beat this side. I'm not saying Ghana are bad or anything like that. But Germany's reserves are good enough to beat Ghana's first team. In my opinion anyway. Oh, that's a good through ball, but surely that's offside. No, it's not. And Ghana have scored. It's Michael Essien with the first goal. And we have heavily underestimated Ghana here. 1-0 down already. Defensive error. And we need to recover from this. Look at that. I thought that was offside, but obviously not. Oh, look at this. Dribbling by Podolski. Yes, it's 1-1 and Podolski has equalised. Lovely dribbling move by Podolski to get past the Ghanaian defence. I didn't think it would be that simple, really, to get past them. But, yeah, I mean, he just did and just struck it into the bottom corner. Go on, cross that in. That's a beautiful ball and good header. But, unfortunately, it was saved. Howardes to cross this one in. Not headed, but we got the ball back here with Mertesacker. He went for it, and that wasn't a bad strike for a defender. Good ball to Gomez, but he ran away from it for some reason, even though I was running right towards it. The mysteries of 2014. Oh, that was a terrible mistake. We just got a score. Yes, it's Podolski. Terrible mistake. I think that was more to do with the physics engine than anything else. Sometimes when players get past to, they will lose the ball and they won't be able to control it. It is kind of lifelike, but at the same time, it isn't. Because if it happens to you, it will really anger you. It does with me. But that was terrible defending by Ghana. They should have just cleared it. And it's 2-1. I think that these reserves can go quite deep into this tournament. I'm not sure about winning the whole thing, but definitely deep into it, 100%. I feel like we have the talent to beat some of these sides. Like, we've already beaten Portugal. We're beating Ghana here as well. But here we go. Germany pressing. There is a room for a goal here into the box. And it was just cut out. It's still bouncing towards the Ghanaian net, but it goes out Murtasaka, oh, I really want to score a banger with Murtasaka. I think that would be class. Go on, tackle him, please. Oh, what a last-ditch challenge that was against Atsu. He was going through there, and I just poked it away. Crossed in. It's headed all oh, just wide from Mario Gomez. And they're going to take it short. They go for the long shot. Off the bar, and it came off the line. I want to see how close that was. How close was this shot to going in? Obviously, it didn't go in, but let's have a look. Off the bar, and oh, it wasn't that close, but still, not a bad effort. Only a couple of minutes left of added time, pretty much, and Germany will have another win and a round of 16 on the horizon. Not bad for a reserve team, but like I said, this reserve team is still pretty decent. I think that that's the whole point of these reserve runs, is just checking out reserve teams because usually on my normal runs I don't actually use substitutes unless I absolutely have to so it's nice going back through these games and having a look and seeing who actually were the reserve players of these squads because you know some of them actually turned out to be good players and some of them just disappeared off the face of the earth but we just beat in Ghana 2-1 thanks to a Podolski brace our third and final match then is against the United States who are rooted to the bottom of the group but I'm fairly sure that if they do beat us and by a big margin they might still be able to qualify because Portugal beat the United States and that means that we have six points Ghana have three Portugal have three United States have zero so they just got to hope that Portugal 
Well, actually, no. The United States cannot qualify. So that was a really bad mathematic effort <laughs> error there, I guess. Throw ball. And Podolski cannot get there. Back to Tim Howard. Boots it away. That was actually quite a clean kick for a change. 2014, sometimes when the goalkeepers do that, they'll just boot it right in front of them, about a metre in front of them. The United States just forced their way past me. Great save. And another block by the defence. And we move clear of the defensive area. Fire that one into the box. A volley opportunity. What a save by Tim Howard. We've got the ball back here. And we fire it in. And that is Mario Gomez yet again with another goal for Germany. In the 40th minute, we have scored and um, we're looking good. The United States not looking too brilliant. Even though they defended decently in that one that defensive play wasn't very good and we're 1-0 up it's half time and we're 1-0 up over the United States we're doing what we came here to do and um, I'm kind of surprised that we are in the position to win all three group stage games I felt like I would have probably lost against Portugal but I didn't realize how just how good the reserves for Germany were Sammy Kadira goes for it. Oh, what a long shot that was. And what a save as well by Tim Howard as well. I couldn't get past their defence for quite a long time. So I figured, why not blast it? It almost nestles into the top corner. Oh, the United States going through here. And they kind of misplayed that, I'd say. And that's going to be it. Germany squeezed by the United States 1-0. But they pick up all nine points from this very tough group. And I'm very happy with that. Now we focus on the knockouts. Now here's the thing with this game, which is different from the other World Cup games. Because, you know, 2014 is a tiny bit more advanced from 2006 and 2010. 2014 has a form system and um, an energy system as well. So your players will get tired. In that match, I noticed towards the 60th minute, most of my players were running out of stamina. All my substitutes are the first team players and we're not allowed to use them for this run because that's the whole point of a reserve run, right? Is to not use any first team players. So yeah, that's going to be a problem as we go deeper into the World Cup. The only other substitutes we have are the two Bender brothers and also I think Gundawan and a reserve goalkeeper, but that is literally it. I mean, that's a little bit better the stamina but it's still not quite at full stamina i need to change something about this and i'm gonna do it gertz needs to come forward podolski needs to come back maybe we put podolski off and put like gundawan on our next match is against russia in the round of 16 a very tough match indeed every time i play russia i always say this on my standard runs they are a very defensive team and that's not going to change in this one what they'll do is they'll defend 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 and then they'll hit you on a counter attack which you don't expect and then they'll score and then they'll go back to defending no oh what great defending but then we just pass it straight to them and they almost scored and they did score. Oh, Kershakov scores. And in the fifth minute, Russia had taken the lead. Terrible defending by Germany. We should have booted it well clear in that, that one. We should have booted it far up the pitch instead of just passing it. But that's that's sort of like a, a sort of muscle memory. It's just to press the A button. Dribble. And I almost went for it. And what's happened here? What's happened? Is it? It's, it's not a penalty, is it? No, it's not. Mario Gomez committed the foul. We're getting tackled far too easily by Russia as well. I think the stamina and the energy is starting to affect this team. Go for the strike. It's blocked again by Russia. That's all they're going to do the whole game. It's a stingy tactic, but it's Fabio Capello ball. That's all it is. At the moment, we're 1-0 down. I'm hoping to get back into the game, but... I honestly think that we probably won't. I think the stamina is affecting this game way more than usual, which is a shame. I personally feel that Russia would lose against Germany's reserves in real life. I don't think Russia are a particularly an amazing outfit, especially in 2014. Russia are just super good defensively right now. I can't get past them. I told you at the start of this, didn't I? I told you. This is how Russia play like every single World Cup game. Russia tackle yet again. Comes off of Gertz's arm and goes out for a throw into Russia. The most frustrating match in the history of the World Cup, I'd say. And then it, that happens. What is going on? I know it's reserved Germany, but Russia aren't that good, man. 
Come on, like go forward. Germany, you're an all out attack, please. And we're about to lose. Yeah, we lost against Russia. I'm really, really absolutely annoyed about that. Russia in 2014 aren't that good. They're just not that good. They just weren't that good. They didn't get out the group stage. They were uninspiring team. They got a lucky goal here. And what did I say at the start of this match? That they would do that and sit back for most of the run. Right, let's simulate all the way to the end and see who wins. It was Spain in the final against Brazil. So Brazil lose out on their own World Cup in the final this time round. So we can wrap this video up by saying that Germany's reserves would not win the 24 14 World Cup based on my gameplay anyway, but they would have got out the group stage. Still a decent group of players, but yeah, just failed in the round of 16. We'll do more reserve runs with uh, I think France 2018 we need to do and I want to do a couple more final finalist runs as well. You're talking like, you know, Argentina in 2014, Holland in 2010, 2006 France team as well, potentially. Um, yeah, all those sort of teams. Anyway, if you did enjoy this one, keep it local as always, like and subscribe and I'll see you again for the next video.